The High Boy is a device made from necessity. It's got Wi-Fi, sub gigahertz, NFC, IR, BLE, and GPIO. You see, the Flipper Zero is an amazing educational tool to kind of dip your toes into hacking. But what if your government banned them? Well, that's just what happened. Brazil has been seizing all imports of the Flipper Zero since 2023. Well, a group of Brazilian developers decided to take this from a setback to an opportunity. And in the process, they may have made a true Flipper Zero killer. If you can't have a Flipper Zero, make your own. And that's just what these developers did, and I've been following them since day one. So today, not only are we gonna go over the Kickstarter to see what the High Boy is all about, but make sure to watch till the end because I've got some inside information from the early days of High Boy. All right, so that's enough introduction for today. This is High Boy. So I don't have a High Boy in hand. I think there's only like five production samples that were made and those all went out to developers. So I think the best thing to do is just to hop right into the Kickstarter. All right, so let's just go ahead and pull up the Kickstarter right here. And here we have the High Boy. So let's watch the Kickstarter video. All right, let's go. What device is that? It looks more like an iPod. This is High Boy. A device for you to become a hacker. Analyze, interact with, and test the systems around you. And obviously, if you haven't seen this before, they're testing out NFC or near field communications. It's what's used by a lot of different things like My Fair Classic cards. This is like hotel cards, things like that. And yeah, it's a very, very useful feature. It's one of the things I use most frequently on my Flipper Zero. Take it anywhere, portable and easy to carry. Now, I do have to say, I kind of like the form factor. They definitely, you know, leaned on the iPod pretty heavily, but it's such a great design. Why would you not want to lean on something like that? So I do like the form factor. With Wi-Fi functions, analyze and test Wi-Fi networks, scan, capture packets, and even test network security and much more. Now, one of the things is I do believe they have a stretch goal. We'll take a look at that in a second, but they want to put an ESP32C5 in there, which will allow for 5G deauthing and network testing, which is an absolutely amazing feature. Editing Sasquatch here in one of the most satisfying record scratches of all time. My buddy Ghost Strats actually confirmed that the High Boy team is going to be implementing an ESP32C5 in this device, which means it'll have 5G. And what's really cool is they're not just replacing the ESP32 S3 with the C5. No, they're going to have both. This thing's going to be a powerhouse, and I got to say it, this might be the Flipper Zero killer. Take it anywhere. With radio frequency in the 315 megahertz to 915 megahertz range. I really, really like this frequency analyzer. It looks awesome. It's got kind of like a rolling, it's not really a waterfall. I guess it's a sideways waterfall, but I love being able to see the spectrum. Because if you're trying to figure out what frequency a device is transmitting on, being able to see a full range of the spectrum makes it so much easier and more intuitive. All right, let's keep moving. But not before this quick segue to today's sponsor. Bray Swan Arena. All right, so have you ever looked at a brand new shiny AI model and thought, hey, I can break that? Well, now's your chance to prove it and get paid. Gray Swan partners with the biggest names in AI, Anthropic, OpenAI, Google's DeepMind, to battle test their models before they ship to the world. The labs help set up the missions, and then 12,000 plus red teamers swarm in to find exploits, edge cases, and failure modes. The stuff bad actors would love to discover first. Two challenges are live right now. Machine in the middle with a $100,000 prize pool and indirect prompt injection with a $40,000 prize pool. That's $140,000 on the table. If you can outsmart these AI models, you're getting paid for it. This isn't just script kitty stuff. You're literally helping make AI safe before it hits billions of users. And the labs partnering with Gray Swan on these challenges, they're watching. Links in the description. So go hack some AI, make it safe, and most importantly, get paid. Thank you so much to Gray Swan for the continued support. You guys are awesome. All right, let's get back at it. Analyze signals from remote controls, doors, and any device that uses radio frequency. Analyze radio frequency protocols.
I do wanna say too, I really like their interface. I thought it was gonna be a single color screen, but now that I'm watching the video on it, it's actually way better than I thought it was. They are kind of leaning on the virtual pet side of things, which a lot of these devices do, which I actually kind of think is fun, but it just adds a little level of lightheartedness to a hacking tool. And I can totally appreciate that. The High Boy is more than a hacking device. It's a tool and a learning machine, all in one sleek case. And I think it's important to note is that, like just like the Flipper Zero, it's a learnings tool. So the fact that they're able to introduce this product into a market that the Flipper Zero is not allowed in is very, very commendable. And I really like that about this project. Interact with and test NFC systems by reading and emulating the High Boy. The High Boy also works as a universal remote, not only for TVs, but also for projectors, lamps, and any device that uses infrared. Now, I know the IR stuff tends to get abused a little bit more than everything else because people are out there turning off projectors in class. I think it's a necessary thing to have on the device because it is very useful. In fact, I've used the IR ability on my Flipper Zero a ton of times. So, you know, it's a good thing to have, but it's like the most skidded thing ever on these devices. Moving on. Doesn't High Boy have an infrared signal? Don't worry, High Boy learns easily. With micro SD slot up to 32 gigabytes, store test data and analyze systems. So that's interesting. They say up to 32 gigabytes. I'm not sure why they don't have more storage, but honestly, in devices like that, you really don't need them. I do also like not all devices have SD card slots, so definitely a plus. Of course, the High Boy is open source, so you can customize the firmware to your liking and contribute to the community. Now, open source, again, is something that I really, really love. The open source aspects of the Flipper Zero is what really made that community love the device and what really made the device what it is now. If there was no Flipper Zero custom firmware, that device would have not made it anywhere near as far as it has. Right now, honestly, the custom firmware guys are the only ones pushing the Flipper Zero forward at this point. It's been six months since the last drop of official Flipper Zero firmware, so the custom guys, they're holding it all up now. High Boy can also pretend to be a keyboard or mouse via USB or Bluetooth and can run any script for testing or automation. Now this is an absolutely awesome thing to be able to do, both Bluetooth and wired bad USB because these automation scripts, they're super, super useful and being able to do it wirelessly or wired, it just makes it that much more versatile. And of course it's got a Rick roll. And if you don't know what that is, is basically in this application, it's probably just gonna pull up Rick Astley's song, Never Gonna Give You Up. Every single hacking device pretty much has to have some sort of Rick roll on it. It's like putting doom on anything with a screen. And there it is, yep. Plus, High Boy comes with spare GPIOs, so you can snap on external modules, prototype new features, and explore hardware hacking. Now, GPIO, again, is one of those things I think is an absolute must on devices like this. Now, the positioning of the GPIO on this might be a little problematic for expansion boards because it's right on the side. If you're clever enough, you could probably design something that's long and kind of fits right on the side of it, but I'd love to add things like GPS or you know extended range CC1101s for longer range sub gigahertz, all sorts of stuff like that. But it does have GPIO, so that makes it really cool. High Boy was made for hackers, creators, tech enthusiasts, and the endlessly curious. It's not just a tool, it's an invitation to explore, push boundaries, and understand how things really work. And remember, curiosity didn't kill the cat, it just hacked the system. I actually really like this promo video. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It definitely looks like a DIY project that they're not trying to make it look like some crazy high production thing. It's got good transitions. It just looks good, but also it feels homemade, which I think makes the project feel a little better to me. One of the problems that we ran into with things like the Cyber Pro and the Interrupt is they tried to have these like 
professional looking videos, but it looks like they spent all their money on making the video and none of the money on making the product. All right, let's keep scrolling down and see what else is going on. Obviously they've raised $136,000 as of the filming of this video, which is probably a week before you see it. And they've got over 1200 backers, which is absolutely awesome for those guys. All right, let's get scrolling down and see what's going on. So we have the high boy right here. And yeah, it just shows all of the things that it can do. So let's keep going down the early birds. It looks like the device itself is going to sell for about $160, which puts it right at where the flipper zero used to be. But this also has Wi Fi. So that's pretty cool. I think the only thing you might be missing out with the high boy is I button. And if you can find somebody who bought a flipper zero just to use I button, let me know because I'd love to talk to them about what they're doing with I button because it seems like there's almost no application to that, at least in the US where I'm located. We'll keep scrolling down 140 is a Kickstarter special. And then yeah, it looks like they have pretty much an unlimited supply of these guys. So let's keep on moving down. And yeah, meet High Boy, a next generation hardware hacking device that merges power, versatility, and portability into one compact tool. It's exactly what the High Boy is trying to do. And they're trying to do it in a location that the Flipper Zero is not allowed to be imported, which is a very, very noble endeavor. If we scroll down right here, it says High Boy, born from restriction, built for open source freedom. Because again, they can't get flipper zeros in Brazil, which kind of sucks. They talk about then one day that curiosity was blocked. Powerful learning tools began to be restricted and banned in many places, especially Brazil. The door to hands-on exploration was being shut. So they asked themselves, why not make their own device? So if we scroll down, we can see some tech specs here. It's got a two inch color LCD display. You can see the purple on there. That's why I thought this was gonna be a single color, but it's great to see it's full color. You've got a four direction button, center button and a back button. So it's basically got the same buttons as a flipper zero, but I do like the orientation of the setup of the device. It would also be kind of neat. I think I say this about almost any device. It's a rectangle. I'd love if they would have a sideways orientation that you can switch to in the firmware. I have a feeling that can't be that hard to do, but just an idea. It's got an SD card slot. We talked about that three volt and five volt GPIO power, which you know you definitely need because sometimes you need that five volt for whatever you're doing. It's got a normal, looks like slot of GPIO pin. So it goes in a straight line. The one challenge you have with those is you have to make sure that you get your customer to understand there's a direction to the board. If you plug it in backwards, that's bad. That's why on the Flipper Zero, they have like five pins and then four pins or whatever. So you can only plug the board in one way. So it's just a thought. On top, you have your IR, which is you know where it would be and USB-C because Again, it's the only USB that's any good. If you make something with micro B, you should just have your Kickstarter canceled in general. You need to have USB-C. So let's keep on scrolling down. So they say no more modules, no more hassle. The pocket tool scene is incredible, but it's stuck in time, which is true because if you don't have Wi-Fi on board, like the Flipper Zero doesn't, needing an add on board for that seems kind of silly nowadays. And just like some of the other devices like the Code Dot, this is running an ESP32 S3, which is a very capable chip. So that's really, really cool. High Boy isn't a clone. It's the upgrade the community has been waiting for. And honestly, it really seems like it might be. The community is really looking for the next generation Flipper Zero that has things like Wi-Fi and ideally an ESP32 C5. Let's keep scrolling down. So this is kind of fun. Meet Octobit, your guide to the invisible. So Octo is eight and bit, there's eight bits to a byte. So that's kind of where the name came from. It's kind of cheeky. I like it. It's cool. Eight tentacles, eight bits, one byte. So now again, we're going over more of the tools. Obviously we do have Wi-Fi. So that means you should be able to de-authenticate devices from a network, capture handshake packets, and then, you know, do what you will with those. So it says it'll be able to do network analysis, traffic analysis, and a network scan, vulnerability testing, like a port scan, capture beacons and handshakes like we said heat map of wi-fi is always useful because it's nice to know what channel things are on because if you have your own network you can figure out if you have way too many things on certain channels so super useful and of course they have captive portals because you know everything like this has to have a captive portal because it's a really really useful device but let's keep scrolling down it has bluetooth so of course it'll be able to do all of the same bluetooth testing you'll be able to run spams rick rolls on that as well and you'll be able to run sour apple and all those other things that you can do on most of the other devices that have Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy. Scrolling on, we have NFC, which again, I think is super useful because learning how to test the security of cards that you have permission to test is very useful because it's a great learning tool. And I just love learning about NFC. It's a really, really cool protocol. 
Moving on, sub gigahertz. It's got a CC1101, which is gonna go through basically all of these sub gigahertz under one gigahertz. We use a lot of 433 and 315 and 868 megahertz. In the States, we use a lot of 315 and 433. That's where most of your remotes live. And yeah, that's a great thing to be able to have. Plus the visualizer they showed before is fantastic. Of course, again, it does have IR, which we talked about before. It's a great way to get people really upset at you at a restaurant. HID slash USB interface, which just means you can run bad USB so you'll plug a cable into the high boy and into your computer and you'll be able to run code that way so you could do things like open up a calculator or just automate almost anything it's very useful and being able to do it through bluetooth makes it that much more convenient and as we mentioned before yeah it does have gpio and it shows them using it to probably flash some sort of rom into a router maybe i'm not sure but, but there's actually a lot of stuff you can do with gpio that you people almost never do because you can flash, you can do a lot of cool stuff with a device like this. It does have the micro SD slot, which we talked about before, and it's open source. Now here we have the stretch goals. At the $100,000 flex goal, which we've already met, we're gonna add RFID, which we already have, cool. 450,000, okay, now they wanna add LoRa mesh to this system. It is kind of an interesting integration for a device like this to add LoRa, and if you don't know what LoRa is, LoRa is low range frequency messaging. So it's an encrypted end-to-end -end messaging system that uses different nodes kind of hopping around, hence the mesh. So basically you have a device which hops to another device, which hops to another device, which allows you to send encrypted messages to you and anybody else who's kind of in your little chat. It's very useful and in this day and age, having encrypted kind of standalone messaging is absolutely awesome. So let's keep going. Now we have, okay, $1 million flex goal for 5G Wi-Fi. As I had mentioned earlier, the developers have already committed to have not only the ESP32 S3, but also the C5. So this will be dual band and absolutely epic. No more million dollar stretch goal, they are doing it. All right, so let's hop on over to Discord real quick. Let's pop this up here. And I can show you some of the early stuff that they sent us about the high boy. So here we have, again, a really, really early prototype board. It shows the GPIO, the CC1101 coil antenna. And yeah, it's got everything on there already. Very, very cool. This is a really, really early demo of what the high boy is supposed to look like when it's all assembled. I think that's super cool. All right. Here we have a dump of some very, very early images. Look at this. We've got a black and white image, but it does have the octo bit on there, which is cool. Octo bit, the renders. We have the two boards because this is an NFC board, which kind of folds over, kind of like the Flipper Zero does. It's very, very cool. And here's another super early prototype. You'll notice they still have the small board on there. But yeah, again, they've been with us the entire time showing off every step of this project. That's why I feel so good about this Kickstarter. All right, super flashy video, but this is, yeah, reading NFC. So they have this working on their super early prototypes. Again, they've been with us the whole way. I love this stuff. This is a really cool feature. So they're showing off screen mirroring, which the Flipper Zero can do and if you saw my nyan box video being able to screen clone is super super useful so i really love that feature in this device here we have some really early raw analyzer videos very cool showing off that raw analyzer that spectrum analyzer i love that and yeah they've been dropping this stuff in discord the entire time I do love this animation because, again, it's really pulling from the Flipper Zero, like Flipper on the Couch guy. And it's just kind of a nice little nod to the community and to Flipper Zero because, again, it's inspired by Flipper Zero. So I, I love that little touch. This was also really cool too. They sent some shirts over to some of the folks that went to Black Hat. So High Boy actually had visibility at Black Hat, which is super cool. This one's cool too. I don't think I've seen this anywhere else. So they've got kind of an alternate color screen. Oh, it's Matrix device. That's really cool. So yeah, it says exit Matrix. It's got Matrix code dripping down. This is a black colorway, which I don't think I've seen almost anywhere else. And this is a little bit different of a UI. I love that. It's super cool. If they have animated Matrix code on anything, I absolutely love it. So that's the high boy. I've been following this device for literally forever, and it's so nice to see them actually on Kickstarter. And I like it even more because their story is absolutely commendable. They can't get a Flipper Zero where they are, so they decide, hey, we're going to do it ourselves. What do you think about the high boy? I genuinely am interested in your feedback, so leave a comment down below. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to smash that like button, and we'll catch you next time.